Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, this is Tammy Patzer, and I am happy to introduce you to today's guest, Dean Renfro. Dean is best-selling author, speaker, and coach, and business owner, and Dean Renfro is an action-driven person who is able to quickly assess situations and then provide strategic steps to a solution. Dean Renfro is actively engaged in helping local businesses, churches, organizations, and people design a map to success through developing custom strategies to fit their goals and vision and providing personal and business coaching and consulting. Welcome. Well, uh, Tammy, thank you uh, for uh, inviting me to be here today. I really appreciate the opportunity and I hope that your listeners can uh, learn a little bit today from what we're going to talk about. I'm really excited uh, because you have a lot of experience helping business owners. So who would you say you help the most? Well, I, uh, I've been I've been in this uh, for 40 plus years and various different connections of, of uh, people and relationships and businesses. But, you know, primarily from the coaching perspective of my business, which is, is, a, is a big bulk of what I try to do, is it's basically designed for small businesses that are you know somewhere in the three to fifteen year stage of business they they've been able to get past the critical component of we made it and uh usually they've acquired a, uh, some some employees somewhere along the way and and uh, that kind of thing so that's that's kind of the primary uh, uh client that i'm uh i pursue and and pursues me because I can help them go to the next level because oftentimes as we learn in businesses what got you to here won't get you to the next level of income or employees or product or whatever. And so that's that's not my primary focus, uh, who I work with the most and the best. I, I understand that because as a business owner myself, I've been there. You know, I've been started a business, got it successful, got past year three of not, you know, not losing the whole thing and, and not losing my shirt and everything I got to, to get to there. And then, of course, employed people along the way and had to figure out how to make that work and then how to grow the business enough to support the people I brought on. So I underst- I guess a big thing is to say I understand that uh, for, for business people. And oftentimes they don't get that with uh, the typical uh, approach to, to people who are trying to help them grow their business. They're not somebody that's actually done it. They're just somebody that's trying to tell them what to do next. I've somehow turned, I don't know if you heard that or not, <laughs> but uh, somehow I turned on the notification to tell me what time it was, and that was not in my my intention. Okay. So with the people that you help, it's, it's a big responsibility to, to have a business, and I know that you've developed a five-step system that I certainly want you to tell us about, but give me two or three of what you think are the biggest problems facing your clients and customers. Yeah, you know, Tammy, the, I, the, one of probably the biggest uh, issue that uh, people in business face, of course, is, is oftentimes how to create more business or what you'd call, you know, putting people into a, a, a pipeline or a funnel, uh, typically called lead, lead generation. How, how do I get more business? And, and that that becomes an issue because most people, when they go into business, they get into business to do their business, whatever that might be, whether it's mowing a yard or operating on somebody or trying a case or, or, or uh, selling a product or a service. They get in business to do that. And then suddenly it, it they realize, wait a minute, this is not this it's going to take more than this. I have to get more customers, more clients. Well, wait a minute, I'm doing this work over here and I don't have time to get more people or I don't know how to do that. I didn't get in business to market my business. I got in business to do what I'm passionate about. And so that's when as they get to that stage, they begin to realize, you know, the phone's not ringing, people aren't walking in the door, people aren't signing up or whatever for their product or their service. They they're looking for lead generation. So uh, that that really is uh, is one of the things that I work primarily with them in overcoming 
well, let's talk about how that functions and how that works because I, I realize you don't live in that world every day. Uh, you live in the world that you live in to do your business because that's for many people that is so demanding. Their business is demanding, let alone all the other things that go along with it. So that that's one problem that that I see uh, many business owners have is they don't know how to build a qualified lead process to get the people to engage in business with them that want to spend money with them, who who aren't going to bleed them dry or make them give away the farm for them to do business with them. So we we help them. Uh, understand that. And then the second bit, uh, problem that I often see is a big, you know, it's kind of one of those things that's staring you in the face, but you don't realize it, is that oftentimes most pe- business people think that they have a fairly good idea of what it takes to follow up and follow through with their with their uh, new customer that they've spent a lot of money to get. Uh, and they don't realize that they, they have re- almost nothing in place really that is uh, going to continue a follow-up process and bring the person along so that the per- this person that they spent all this money on will spend more money with them down the road and, better than that, provide them free marketing by referring their business to other people. And, and oftentimes, their, their idea of that follow-up is built in the idea would you know, well, I, 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 give, uh, I give this for referrals. Do you know anybody? Give me five referrals. Well, that that's a pretty weak system because most people aren't really prepared to do that and don't really want to do that at the moment. It's a whole lot better when the customer says, hey, I got this service that I do, uh, I have, and you've got to meet this person or you've got to get this service when they tell it with excitement in their voice versus, oh, no, I don't know what to do here about filling this out on a piece of paper and all that kind of thing. So those are two really big problems that I see business owners have that they can, if they can get past those two, uh, some of the rest of this becomes a fairly uh, automated, systematic approach to grow in their business. So basically, lack of leads or unqualified leads, and then once you actually get a qualified lead or even client, following up to make them a stronger, better, lifelong client are two of the big problems. So uh, how do you solve this? What You, you have a five-step process that you've identified so can you kind of give me a little short overview of how this all works yes yeah yeah the five-step thing is is really um uh, oftentimes when you talk to a business person and you start talking to them about growing their business they they assume that that growing their business you know if you say double their business kind of idea because that's usually what people say well what are your expectations well i really like to double my business i like to double the amount of money i got coming in and all that kind of thing but they say, but, you know, I don't have time to do that because they're in there thinking it's I got to do twice as much work as I'm doing now to produce the same kind of income, same kind of customer base and so forth. And so what we help them do with this five-step process is realize, no, you don't have to do that. It starts with, you know, identifying your most ideal customer or client. And most most people have taken the shotgun approach to that, and, and they think they've defined that fairly well. But what I try to help them understand is you can you can play in two two places. You can play on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and you've got all these people, you know, waving their waving their ticket in the air, saying, "Hey, buy from me, buy from me, buy from me. I've got the best deal, best deal, best deal." You can play in there, and basically, you know, give away your product, or you can go over here in this other field where there's just you. And you're the only choice in the field, and everybody wants to do business with you because you you've brought people to that field that will you know do business with you anytime, any place, anywhere for any amount of money because that's that because you you you're you're solving their problem for them personally. So that starts with identifying a, a, a lead uh, in the sense of what we would call today an avatar, and that goes beyond just the you know, the demographics and those kind of things. It gets down to, you know, what are the spending habits of these people? How do they spend money? How do they go about uh, the process of making a decision? All these, you know, really intricate things that the business owner many times has no idea even exists or thinks, well, it would, I don't have time to gather all that. I'm just going to, I got to make a sale. I got to make a sale. I got to get a client. I got to get a client. So it starts there. And we show we show our clients and customers. Look, if we can take that and help you def- really define that, and they become the person you want to do business with, then if, all we have to do is increase that ten percent 
on a regular basis and then increase each of our other th four steps 10% and you will actually double the amount of your uh, income without increasing your workload hardly at all. And so it, 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 we help them understand it. So the second point then becomes is uh, when we help them build an avatar out is to become, well, how do we create a conversion process for them? How do we convert them? Because oftentimes a business owner can, uh, confuses a lead with the customer. Matter of fact, they'll use them interchangeably. I'll ask them all the time, well, how many customers do you have? Well, I've got a couple hundred customers. And then, of course, I'm thinking, oh, that's great. And then come find out and know what they meant was I've got 149 leads and I got 10 customers who actually spent money with me. And I, the, and I have to help them understand, well, the difference between a lead and a, and a real customer is there's a conversion has taken place. So let's figure out how to come create a conversion that even as simple, uh, you know, conversion of where they spent money with you, they're willing to spend money with you. And because until you know they're going to spend money with you, you really don't have a customer. You have a lead. So we help them create uh, conversion strategies that gets a uh, transaction to take place, even if it's a small one, so that now we have a customer that uh, we have a relationship as a customer because oftentimes, the again, the confusion is I have this relationship with all these leads. And, and, but there's something that happens to us when we actually have a transaction take place psychologically is now we can, we can treat them differently as a customer than we even do as a lead. And that, that, that helps to grow the customer base and the process. And then from there, we, of course, simply try to help them understand, well, then let's create more transactions. And oftentimes what happens in business as we talk about that, these five steps is that, is that many times we're all we're, we're, we're because we're trying to spend our marketing dollar wisely because we we because we don't know and we don't understand marketing as a business owner so we're trying to spend it wisely we're <clears throat> we're constantly put, putting out an offer to people uh, about one thing <clears throat> and then down the road uh, our client or we hear our client or our customer say something and we say well we do that. And they go, oh, I didn't know that. Well, I a whole lot rather done business with you because I know, like, and trust you, and I, I have this relationship with you. And oftentimes, we have to help our, our our clients and customers see. Look, what all things do you do? We got to make sure we keep those things in front of every uh, one of your customers repeatedly because as their needs and wants grow, we want you to be the source they go to, even if it's not something you do. We try to help them understand. Be a resource to your customer. Even if it's in a totally another field, say, oh, look, I can connect you to that because you're solving their problem. Because that's all really people want when it comes down to it is they want their problem solved. So how do you create more transactions? The, th the fourth step in that is how do you increase your price without running off your customer? And so we begin to work with uh, price elasticity to see, well, how much will they pay for a premium service of this by adding a component to uh, what they do? And, it can, it, and oftentimes I'm amazed by how, how little it takes uh, with a business person to understand, well, you know, if you just add that component to it, you can you can almost double your price you ask of because the person that's valuable to the person so it's a helping the the customer client understand what's valuable to your customer and that is just simply have creating dialogue or, or we would use the term today relationship with the customer use relationship marketing to develop relationships with them to know well look they're looking for this instead of being a blanket and saying, well, I'm going to treat all my customers the same. Well, how can you treat them special, give them value, and they'll pay you any price you want? So now we've increased 10% every time. So now we're almost to the point of where we have doubled the, the, you know, the, the profit coming to them. And, of course, the, the, and the, fifth, the fifth component of the, of the system is how then do we turn those people into – uh, you know, raving fans uh, of this of this client and customer, so that they're marketing for them for free. And now we've reduced the marketing cost ten percent. So now you've ten, 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 ten. Now you've almost doubled their their profit margin for them without doubling their work. So that's kind of how the basics of this works. So you give them a system to use where they basically just go in increments of ten percent, but that becomes huge. 
and it can actually help them double their profit. I, I like a lot of um, what you said. You said you help them learn how to become a resource so that people will come to them no matter what it is they're looking for. That's really important to yes. become the go-to person and also finding the value of what you offer and how you can just add one little teeny detail. It could be like talk to them, you know, in person for a half an hour could end up being what is the big value. You also work a, a lot with local people. And I know that in the world today, we're so busy. We're trying to balance this virtual life and this real life um, and for local business people, I kind of have a twofold question. How important are local networking events in your mind? And if I'm using local marketing events, how do I make myself stand out in the crowd when I am out there in person? And then how do I pull that in to the virtual world? Right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, you know, local, for local business people, you know, uh, mo most local business people tend to be, uh, and I'll use this term loosely, you know, hometown people, people that want to know everybody and be a part of, uh, of things oftentimes. Uh, and so they, they get out, they, they need to get out and rub shoulders with other people. Uh, and, and what do we try to help business people understand from that is, you know, is get out and meet other people that can become your resource. Learn how to partner. The whole concept here may not be to beat, uh, meet a bunch of new clients. Because I think oftentimes that's what business owners think is, well, where do I go to meet a bunch of new clients? Because I got to get a bunch of new clients. Well, one way to do that is go get in a room with a, a bunch of other business people who aren't in the same business you're in and begin to build networks with them so that you can you know, refer them uh, because the best referral, of course, comes from somebody we know, like, and trust. So when Johnny, you know, Johnny over here in Business B says to his client, hey, I, I know you're looking for blank. Well, I met Bill, and Bill is the guy you need to go talk to. Well, you've basically solved most of the problem, uh, the hurdle of uh, of a barrier of, well, I, I, I don't know this person. I don't know how to do business with this person. I don't even know if I'll, you know, whatever about this person. Well, my guy that I know, like, and trust told me about this guy. So I think for the business owner, being in local marketing, networking is important, but you have to kind of readjust your brain. And it's not always about going out and getting customers. It's about going out and making connections to people and being seen and heard and the passion of who you are. But oftentimes what happens when they go into a network meeting is uh, a lot of network meetings are built around the idea of you get up and tell your name and say what you do. And so they get up and they say, hi, my name's Bill, and I, you know, I sell widgets. And <laughs> Yeah, and exactly. That's exactly what everybody else goes, oh, great, good. Uh, you sell a widget. Uh, instead of getting up and approaching the introduction from a perspective of, I'm here to solve people's problems. Introduce yourself that way, something to the effect of, well, you know how everybody is always uh, struggling over how to, how to create more business and, and get more customers and, and, and uh, grow their business? Well, I solved that. And then just be quiet and then pick the conversation back up. And I do that by blank. Well, then people are going to come to you and say, well, tell me a little bit more about how you do that. I, that was interesting what you said. Well, I, you know, I sell this, you know, you know, you know how people are always trying to figure out in their yard how to, you know, how to, uh, uh, you know, how to keep the gutters clean and, and all that without having to climb up on a ladder because they don't want to climb up on a ladder. Well, I solved that problem. And then just be quiet and let people come to you because it's always better if some, if a, if a prospect comes to you and says, tell me about what you do, because at that point you have permission to put your, offer in front of them instead of I'm going to force my offer on you because I got a minute and a half to stand up and bleed all over everybody here and they don't even know if they want to do this but I you so that that's how we try to help our clients learn how to go to network meetings and introduce themselves from a position of power instead of being like everybody else and another way we try to do that of course is another component that we use in the marketing course is help them if they can write a book 
you know, when they stand up as the author, well, I'm the money, you know, I, you know, they do their little spill and said, and on top of that, I am an author who uh, has uh, figured all that out and written all about it in my book. And if you'll see me, you know, later today, I'll be glad to, you know, give you one of my books, an autograph book. And that's what, you know, because nobody else in the room may have, they may have the fanciest business card in the world, but nobody else in the room is going to have a book that they're going to give away to somebody as a lead gen component. Mm-hmm. So it makes you totally different. You're the person everybody's going to go talk to when the meeting gets to that point versus, you know, passing business cards around, which go in the circle file for most people. Yeah. So you could actually take a, a book with you, autograph, copy, boom. You've got something that most people do not like to throw away books. It, it's yeah. something that's ingrained in us. So one of the things that I think that I notice a lot uh, with with business people, especially in the world of online we're so used to this instant gratification that we think when we market online or or even offline we're going to get business immediately um what do you think Uh, do you think that most people are unrealistic when they think that everything is instant in the world today yeah yeah uh, tammy i think that the concept there is that most people most people are not system-oriented thinkers Everybody and and our and the internet marketing plays into it. The television marketing plays into it. You know, call now. And we'll get you know get instead of getting one, you get two for this, and you know all these things. That, so because the pressure is, I, I need to get this customer now. And and what people don't understand is that any given time in the market, only about three percent of people are ready with cash in hand motivated enough to buy what you want, but everybody goes after the 3%. Well, that leaves 97% of the market for smart business people to go after. And I say that because you're not fighting for the 3%. You're not having to give away the farm to get the, the 3%. Now, thirty granted, 30% of that group is never going to buy from you because they don't want it, don't like it, don't like you, don't like your voice, don't like whatever. <laughs> they don't like the color of the day, whatever. They don't, they're just not going to buy it. That's fine. So that leaves 67% of the market. We've got another 7% of the market that is standing there with money in hand, just like the 3%, but they, they need a few nudges. They need a few questions answered. They need some assurity. They need a little bit of time. You know, they don't like the pressure of I got to buy now because that, that, that to them smells like, this is a scam. I'm going to give them my money. I'm not going to get my product. Uh, this is a, you know, you're not giving me your best product at this price. So I'm going to wait a little bit and see what you've got to offer. And they just need some education. And again, that goes back to what we talked about earlier, where you come along and you teach your business, you know, your client to say, well, look, let, let's give them a little more value here and let's offer some kind of piece of education for them. Of course, that's where I try to always encourage these business owners that that's where your book comes in. See, you educate people with your book and then they get your book and they look at it and they, you know, they may, they might read the first chapter or whatever and they go, well, man, this person is, knows what he's talking about. And he's got a book and, or he's got, uh, you know, he's got a, a video series or he's got a webinar or uh, he's got something that shows me he's thought through this and now I have some more information. I'll buy it. And then there's that other 10% of that first group of people that they, they, they are aware that they need it. They just didn't know where to look. And now you've shown them where to look and you can educate them. So that first, besides the 3%, that first 17% of the market, nobody's marketing to them because everybody's looking for the instant gratification. So helping a business owner build a series of Small steps, increment steps, that, because you, what you want to do is we teach our, our, our clients, look, you need to know the conversation that's going on in the mind of the client, not your mind, not your salespeople's minds, but in their mind, because that's the question you have to answer. And it may be as obvious to you as the day is long. An example the other day happened with the client. He said, I, nobody is Nobody is registering uh, for this offer I have. And he said, I keep getting emails and uh, asking me, who's Bill Smith at (laughs) yahoo.com? Because what they'd done in their form instead uh, where it got to where you enter your email, they, they thought, well, everybody needs an example. And so they put an example email in there. But the people that were coming there weren't as educated about all that. And they're thinking, 
well, I don't know Bill Smith and I'm not about to put my name in here because they would, they would try to highlight and erase it. And of course it, that you can't, you just click it and put your name in it. And so, you know, it was one of those things that we had to help the client see is no, don't put that in there. Tell them what you want. Enter your best email here. That's what you need to put, not an example. They know what their email is. They're going to put their email, but they're not, not understanding what you're asking them here. And then one of the, one of the tech, uh, one of the, uh, uh, um, guys that writes the programmer, he goes, yeah, I've had that happen uh, uh, to me. He said, uh, some, I, I had a, a, a form where it said, enter your name here. And he said, I started getting all these forms that said name, name, name. <laughs> and he said, I realized I had set them up. You know, because uh, enter your name, enter name. He had enter, he had a, he had left out a word. He said, I had put enter name here. And so they were putting name there, thinking they were putting some kind of special. So oftentimes we're so familiar. The whole point of that was, so we're so familiar with our product and structure and, and how we do what we do. We just think everybody's going to get it. And so we help our clients understand, no, they're not going to get it. You got to move them little steps at a time, educate them. A little out of time so that by the time they get through the process, they really value you because you've taken, which is the number one component that everybody is most precious to everybody is not their money. It's their time. When you take time with the person, they understand I have given you a slice of life I can never get back. And, and that becomes, a, that's a value piece for people. So we help them understand that component. Time, yes, that that really is um, our most valuable possession that we have because you cannot get it back and you really can't put value on time. I, I think that's really good and I really like the fact that you broke it down, you know, five-step program, little baby steps, um, and that it's not just a, a cookie-cutter approach that um, everything you do is customized for that particular customer. So before we wrap it up, do you have a golden nugget for our listeners that you would like to share? Well, you know, one, one, I, again, one of the biggest things that I, that I, that I think for most uh, business people is that the, the sales process for people, I, I want to, what, what I try to help them understand is, look, everybody needs stuff. Like if, if I need to go from point A to point B, I need a, a way of transportation. And if you are trying to sell me my need, I'm always going to price shop you. I'm going to look for the best, cheapest price to get me from A to B. However, if I want to go in style from point A to point B, then I'm going to pursue for myself and spend whatever I think I can afford and probably beyond what I can afford to get my want fixed. And I try to help business people. Uh, if I leave them with any nugget is nugget is quit trying to sell to people's needs. You're always going to lose in the price war with needs, figure out what they want and they'll pay just about any price for that. Uh, and, and that, that becomes a, a, you know, a profit margin builder uh, for your business. So that, that, that's one thing that, uh, and that's work that, that takes hard work uh, because we're kind of all in love with our thing and not realizing that nobody else is. And so find out what people want and, and, and deliver that. And they'll, they'll, they'll come to you anytime, any place for any amount of money to buy that. Phenomenal. I, I like that. Dean Renfro, thank you so much for sharing all of those golden nuggets with us today. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you, Tammy. Uh, your listener can find out more from uh, what I do at uh, Business Profits Academy. That's profits with the S, businessprofitsacademy.com. And uh, they can find out all about that at, uh, at that website. Perfect. So, Dean, uh, we talked a lot about uh, your marketing systems. You gave some really good advice about how to become the resource, Uh write a book. That's always good advice. And of course, no, you are not your customer. You really do have to take time to identify your ideal client so that you're working with the right people for you. I think those are some really good takeaways. Again, Dean, thank you very much. Thank you, Tammy. 
This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a great day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.